Welcome back. In the previous part, we arrived here on Vesta Street. And Naji here recommended we go to the bakery, so let's go to the bakery. No trip to Heimdall would be complete without a stop at this excellent bakery. According to whoever wrote the guide, humans die if they go too long without food, don't they? That sounds very inconvenient. We do, but we don't eat just to survive. We do it because it's fun. Food is an art. How is it an art? You're confusing me. Hmm. Maybe it's just one of those things that goes over a doll's head. Maybe. Maybe. Barkeep, one bread, mishy and a drink. Um, I'm not a barkeep, but you got it. Would you like that here or to go? For here, please. To where else can this weary soul go to find solace from the cruel bustle of city life that this here... Boulangeri? Uh, I'm honored you like it here so much, miss. What did all that stuff you said mean? Nothing. I've just always wanted to say something cool like that. What's up? Nothing. You want one, don't you? Look at her face. Want to buy? As a cutting edge Rosenberg doll, I can convert septium into energy. I have no need for food. Okay then. Triple dot. Triple dot. Triple dot. You sure you don't want to buy it? I really want one. There we go. Nom. Triple dot. What do you think? I'm not familiar with what tastes go with what words, but... But... This is really good. Success. So, you got taste buds? I suppose I do. Even I didn't realize I had them. Rosenberg technology can't be beat. And now that I know... Yeah? I want to have some more. Let's get some food in you then. I'll order a variety so you can try different flavors. Yay. Aww. Whoa! I can't believe you tore through that whole menu. You must have a portal for a stomach. I think I understand what you meant before, Nadia. Eating food is an art. You may not understand as well as you think. Well, let's pay the bill and move on to the next place, okay? Nadia and Lapis can now tour the Garnier District. Should probably head to our next stop. The Garnier District. But I want to eat more bread. Don't sweat it. There's plenty more treats to be tried for your bottomless stomach. Right, let's check with these guys. I had to go and restock our bread supplies after a customer ordered enough to feed a horse. We've never had anyone go through our entire menu in one go before. Either they have lots of friends who like bread or they have an insane appetite. LP's well on her way to becoming a cryptid customer in the bread baking community. We've never had anyone go through the entire menu before. Can't help but wonder what kind of customer they are. Thank you again for that massive order. It's an absolute joy to see people love our bread as much as you did. The joy is all mine. You helped me to discover the joys of food. The satisfaction of taste is like nothing I've ever felt. I'm sure you're exaggerating, but thank you all the same. She's not. We were planning to add a new item to the menu in partnership with one of Crossbell's bakeries, Morgs. It was going to celebrate Crossbell's independence. I had so many ideas for it. I never dreamed the signing ceremony would end the way it did. I hope Oscar and Bennett are doing all right. Indeed. You try the recommended speciality, soft boiled egg sandwich. There we go. Right. Let's head on 
to the Garnier district. Let's go. Oh, hello. Heimdall Underground? You're back in the underground? Those are the same soldiers who were after that case. So the Imperial Army is in on this? I suspected we would find them here. You finished transporting all the goods to their destination? Indeed, preparations are now complete. What happens now hinges on the efforts of you and your comrades tomorrow. You've got nothing to worry about there. We're not just going to roll over and let our division cease to exist. Van Dyck and Regnitz are going to pay dearly for their cowardice. The Supreme Leader is looking forward to seeing what you can do. We'll restore the Empire to its former glory and crush the loathsome Republic once and for all. Should we strike down? No. There seems to be a rather lot of them. We wouldn't want our real targets slipping away in the ensuing bedlam either. I have some more suitable candidates in mind to take care of this. Oh? Heimdall, Garnier District. Hey Nadja, what's next? What are we going to eat now? Since when did the boss tell us to go on some gourmet tour across the city? Can't we? I can tell you don't care much about gathering intelligence anyway. Let's leave the real work to them so we can have fun. Now you're speaking my language. But if we try something at every spot, I'm going to go broke as a joke. Oh well. I'll just make Mask reimburse me. Call it a business expense. So let's make it happen, LP. We'll hit the town and stuff ourselves with good eats from one corner to the other. I read the guidebook, so I'll lead the way to the best spots to hit up. Yay, food time! No oh dear. Alright, let's check inside here first, in the jewelers. I am liking this mix of Cold Steel 2 and Cold Steel 4 areas though. Was Vesta Street in 3? I can't remember it being in 3. No, wait, it was in three, wasn't it? Yeah, 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 yeah. Wow, all the jewelry here is so sparkly. Wonder how much I'd have to wear S down to buy me one of these bad boys. A tiara decorated with large crimson gems is on display. Crimson tiara, the masterpiece of Heimdall, designed during the Middle Ages, was lost to time before being found once more. It is now considered a national treasure. Mm-hmm. What adorable young ladies welcome. Every year during the summer festival, we display a special exhibit to draw the eye. This year's display will be the beautiful white wedding dress the princess wore during the royal wedding. Don't miss it. What adorable young ladies. Same again. Our new princess happened to wear none other than this very tiara on display. The details are under wraps, but I can spare a little nugget or two. You see, uh, the tiara that had been passed down in the royal family, and that was stolen, was returned. That tiara was then worn during the wedding and banquet, and then she switched to this tiara after changing. I do admit to a touch of disappointment, but I'm not surprised they came to adore the brilliant shine of that legendary tiara. When I visited to pass along the tiara, I was able to catch sight of the prince's bride-to-be. Her reserved beauty and the strength she carried about her was... Well, it was positively lovely. Positively lovely, he says. Truth be told, Sales of jewels have taken a hit since the war. Yeah, they would do. I'm sure all high-end boutiques are in the same position right now. I never paid that much attention to economy until it started working against me, but I'm feeling its ire now. Truth be told, sales of jewels have taken a hit. Hmm, a machete tiara. Very well. There's the ones we really want. 
be a while before we get them. I mean, we're not super far away. But still far enough away that we can't get them. You know. Hmm? Not often children come in here. Make sure you don't drop any of the goods on display while lurking. How rude, I would never. It's not rude, Nadja. Children are adorable. And since I'm a doll, I'll be adorable forever. That's not what... Hmm, not often children come in here. Right, okay. Who we got out here then? Let's start with you. Oh, people talk up this opera house a ton. Want to see what's up, LP? I don't smell anything coming from there, so no. On to the next spot. So it's food or nothing, huh? Really? I came here today to study up on this area before I start up any formal tours around here. Now, I wonder what's been up at the Opera House lately. Last I heard, the Azure Diva is still MIA. Yeah, I wonder why. But she's not its only celebrity singer. I'll just focus the facts on others they have in their lineup instead. Now that the tourism industry is finally getting back on its feet, I've got to put on the best tours I could ever imagine. Oh, I remember that place being talked about in the guidebooks too. I better study it so I can be ready with answers. Tourism here was in such a slump after the war. I have to do what I can to help my industry get back on its feet. The Garnier district traces its roots back to the Middle Ages. The period when this country went through the War of the Lions. Funny how after all this time, Erebonia has kept up with raging one war after another. Just once I'd like to be able to live in peace, but Rufus Alborea has been making such a ruckus that it looks like that's still a dream. Oh. You would think Emperor Dracles wanted the country to live in peace after everything he did for it. Certainly, it's what I want, but that Rufus is raising such a ruckus that it looks like it's just a simple dream. I can see why they call this place the finest hotel in all of the Empire. It's a shame we couldn't make it out to Mishlem. It turns out Heimdall makes for a fine place to vacation too. I'm glad you like it here. Who knows what's going to happen to Crossbell? All we can do is hope we can finally visit MWL one of these days. One of these days. That's just you doing a circle. Right, in here we go. Really? These guys again? It has been an eventful half a year since we last met Count Richmond. Indeed, it was quite the sight seeing those conservative nobles try to act like they owned Erebonia after Osborne's passing. While well, those who fail to keep up with the times will always be left behind. That is simply the way of the world. With that in mind, I've decided that the Empire has no future. I will be investing in Crossbell instead. Of course, you already knew this. I've noticed you trying ever so hard to interfere with my investments. I may have perhaps done that at times, though it was unintentional, I assure you. I merely thought I was correctly reading the times, unlike those other fools. Ah, indeed, I understand what you mean. Thanks to that insufferable Rufus Arborea, I am at risk of losing everything. I expected the accelerated development of Crossbell, its downtown area. It's residential and business infrastructure. If another war breaks out, all my work will have been for nothing. We are in the same position, my friend. I don't wish for that any more than you do. So I have a proposal. What say you to joining forces yet again? I was just thinking the very same thing. This is no time to squabble over cross bell and shares. We must put our differences aside if we're to get through this. Agreed, our partnership is for the greater good. The greater good. The fool, to think he really believes this. I was only interfering Crossbell's market to make him let his guard down. My eyes are set on bigger Calvardian businesses. 
I may perhaps only have a little capital left, but I've invested it in all of Calvert's businesses. You lose this time, Gorty. Yeah, what does Gorty say about this? This is no time to squabble over Crossbell and shares. We must put our differences aside if we're to get through this. <laughs> I can't believe this fool saw me investing a little in Crossbell and went to copy me with all he had. What he doesn't know is that my sights have been on Calvert. My funds may be limited, but there's plenty to gain there. Yep, same as ever. Same as ever. These two fell out over their financial losses during the lead-up to the war. But after what happened in Crossbell, they decided to get together again. No doubt they have thought of another good way to use one another to recoup their losses. No matter the times, these two never change. And I mean that in a bad way, of course. That they are both up to something is clear, and that promises not to be anything good. I wouldn't be surprised if they put all their assets on the line. Yeah, they're so alike. Welcome to Dear Himmel. I'm afraid the dining area is currently fully reserved, but you are welcome to use all of our other facilities. I dearly hope you will enjoy your visit. Welcome to Dear Himmel. Right, same again, Roido, mate. Welcome to Dear Himmel. Are you looking for a room, perchance? We have rooms that come with amenities for children to make your stay a pleasant one. We offer rooms to suit all kinds of guests. I am sure we have something that will suit your needs. Children, are you implying that I am a baby? I'll have you know that I am a state-of-the-art Rosenberg de... Mm -hmm. We know LP, but no one else needs to. Welcome to De Himmel. Are you looking for a room per chance? This seems to be the same. Right. Uh, we don't need to rest. Head on up a little. Only hotel employees are allowed to pass here for the time being. Oh my. If you have business beyond here, please speak to one of them. I wonder if some bigwig's visiting. I don't know, but why do they get to decide where we can and can't go? Only hotel employees are allowed to be here. If you have business beyond here, please speak to one of them. All right, okay. Our VIP suite is often used by both famous Erebonians and distinguished guests from abroad. Vita Clotilde, for example, has stayed here many a time. Yes, yes, we're all familiar with that. Our VIP suite, guests from abroad, many a time. Yes, 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 we're done. Can I help you? Oh, sorry, think I got the wrong room. Who's so big a hotshot here that they need guards for their room? Is it? Nah, it's none of my business. I mean, do I even see a dot on the map here? No reason to poke a random bear. I mean, there's no one in there. There's no dot on the map, therefore they're not there. That's how that works. Yep. Okay, so food store. Ice cream and crepes! Come on, Nadia. Let's eat already. Don't worry, I got you. Two chocolate banana crepes, please. Got it. Two specials coming right up. If you could give me a few minutes, ladies, I'll whip you up a couple of crepes that'll knock your socks off. Yay! And there was much rejoicing. I guess it takes a minute because it's a special. Want to walk around a little more to kill time? Can we? That sounds great. Oh. All right. So clearly we're done for now. We'll sp still speak to him again, though. Hey, mister. Do we still have to wait? Can't we eat yet? Sorry, but you'll have to wait a little longer. Can't rush fine art. As tasty as these. Guess it takes a minute because it's a special. Want to walk around a little more to kill time? Right oh. Hey, watch it, mate. Just wandering around here. Um, yeah, there's nothing else we can do. Because you can see on the right, wait until the crepes are ready. That's got a lock on it. So, the question is, can we actually go back? No. That would have been interesting. Just go back in time to retaking Orcus Tower. Oh, dear. I do feel just, just because we've seen where Reen's story has gone, 
as part of C's route, we should jump over there next. We'll get over to Lloyd eventually. And hopefully he's okay. He should be okay. It's his route. He can't be dead. Right? Anyway, Tareen's route. Ah, we've arrived in Heimdall. Who would have known? We're finally here. Damn, is it ten already? Sure is. Heimdall's pretty far from Ymir. Our next target shall be the muck and mire that gathers in the Vermilion City. The Vermilion City C mentioned can only be Heimdall. But the capital is gigantic. We're going to need some way to narrow our search radius. <laughs> You ask me, the race course in the Garnier district seems suspicious. Do they now? I know, I know. I'll save having fun till our work's done. I'd be happy to take you anywhere you like once we've ensured Prince Oliver is safe. As long as it's not the kind of shady businesses I know you want to go to. I gotcha. Can't very well go to him in uniform. That's not the problem here, Ash. We can go for dessert though, right? Of course. <laughs> It'll be on me, even. She wants those pancakes. Just focus on the investigation first. Let's start with Lady Arie, since she's agreed to speak with us. To the training hall in the Leica district we go, then. Vermilion Muck and Mire. So it does seem to be doing what I hoped it would, where it's splitting up the sections of Heimdall between the roots. I like that. The morning after learning from Major Clare of Crossbell's occupation, we set about discussing how we should act. We also established contact with all the members of Class 7 that we could to inform them of the situation. First, there was the matter of Crossbell itself. Yeah, so definitely not a texture mistake. Because that's a piece of artwork there that has been drawn. And the crossbell bell is upside down there. So it's not some weird random accident where the crossbell bell is upside down on his arm. It's like, no, it's intentional. So, right, so we're going with him being called Inverted Rufus for now. Because that's the only thing that makes sense to me. We knew from the Major's intent that it was under the control of the former Governor General and his Ebon. E Ebon? How are they saying it? Ebon? Defense Force? Anxiety over the region's welfare gnawed at us, but as it had been isolated from the outside world, we had no way to learn more. Indeed, there was little we could do on that front for the time being. And then there was the matter of the search for Prince Oliver and his wife. Their whereabouts remained unknown. Furthermore, the Rounder 7 system we had used to stay in touch over the long distances relied on an artifact stored on the Courageous 2. Ah! And with the airship stolen, that method of communication was lost to us. Our only clue then was the message sent to the Intelligence Division by C. Vague as it was, the information was undoubtedly our best lead in unraveling the mystery of the Prince's disappearance. With hope on the horizon, we set about dividing ourselves into several groups. Major Claire and Una agreed to head east to get a handle on the situation in Crossbell. Meanwhile, Lord Mateus and Kurt would head west and rendezvous with the students at the Vander School. Musée volunteered to return to the branch campus to meet up with the principal and her fellow students, as well as seek help from other sources. The others would all find ways to play to their strengths in aiding our cause. Meanwhile, I was to bring Altina and Ash with me to Heimdall to follow the trail left to us by C's message. That is basically our situation as it stands. 
His Excellency also asked us to tell you that he hopes you'll be able to look after the Hall in his extended absence. Thank you for updating me on everything going on. There she is. It's the least we could do. Your husband did a lot for us. More like put us through the goddamn ringer. All while shrugging off our attacks like we were nothing more than a bunch of buzzing mosquitoes. He sent Kurt flying off a cliff, too. I found him quite terrifying. I do hope he didn't leave you with any lasting trauma. Still, his is a measured hand. If he came at you that fiercely, he trusted you could handle it. I hope you can understand that he only did what he did because he saw potential in all of you. We do. Don't worry. Yeah, could tell he wasn't acting with any ill will. If anything, I'm the one with a reputation for being a stern disciplinarian around here. Based on how often I see my students quake at the knees, I'd wager they fear me more than my husband. We caught wind of that when we were here for one of our field exercises. Kurt's got some monster parents. Surprised the guy ain't half dormitarian or something. In the time I spent with him, it was clear there was much more to him than his stern presence on the battlefield. He was kind enough to share some wisdom with me too. Was he now? <laughs> He's a man of few words, so that's very unusual. I can't picture that happening at all. Huh. Same here. Please don't speak rudely about the man in front of his wife, you two. Don't worry, I appreciate their honesty. Still, I'm glad to see you all seem even more united as a class than you did when you were last here. Do continue to look after my Kurt, won't you? Of course. You would even... Even if we weren't asked. And if he wants help getting into the good kind of trouble, I'm his guy. <clears throat> uh, getting back to why we're here. Has anything out of the ordinary happened in the capital recently? The students who were here have split up across Erebonia to search for information on Prince Oliver's whereabouts. As such, I'm not as well informed on the situation here in Heimdall as I would be. But there is one thing I feel is worth mentioning. What is that? It feels as though there are more people coming and going than there should be, especially given how there are no festivals or celebrations here around this time of year. It's making the capital feel more restless than usual, differently from how it did during the summer festival. It's as though there's something stagnant in the air. Hmm. I'll be glad to not have to deal with any more Calvert spies like at the festival, that's for sure. But stagnant air's all you're gonna get in the city to begin with. You feel anything out of whack, Schwarzer? Not especially, if I'm honest. I'm guessing it's a relatively slight difference, man? Yes, it may even just be my imagination. You've lived in Heimdall for a long time. If something feels amiss to you, it likely is. We'll keep that in mind as we investigate. I'm sorry I can't provide you with any more concrete information. There is one thing I can do, however. I'd like to introduce you to someone dependable to aid your investigation. Oh? Well, I say introduce, but you in particular know her very well. She should be here at any moment now. Ah, there we are. I think I know who that is. I suspected as much. By all means. I mean, we've been to C's route, we know. Elise. Elise. Hello, everyone. It's good to see you all again. The same to you. <laughs> so she's our little helper, huh? Indeed. Sister Doreen. Friend to Princess Alfin and head of St. Astraya's Student Council, the noble Elise Schwarzer herself. The Princess and Muse have already apprised me of the situation, so I spoke with Lady Aurier and volunteered to aid you upon your arrival. 
I apologize if my behavior strikes you as meddlesome, but I am certain that I will be able to aid you in your investigation. You do know more about the capital than any of us. <sighs> You're not coming, and that's final. Oh, here we go. But... <laughs> Out comes the big water. <laughs> There's still far too much we don't know about the situation here. Given that our enemies pilfered the name of the Imperial Liberation Front, we could very well be dealing with terrorists. Involving a civilian in this would be downright irresponsible. So I'm just a civilian, am I? Just a no-good student without a mode of power to her name? That's not what I'm trying to... Oh, I think it is. But even leaving that aside, your blunt dismissal misses an important point. And what point is that? That the situation at hand doesn't relate to me. When I am Princess Elfin's dearest friend. But that is that, and this is... This... As we speak, she is racked with worry over her brother's well-being. Yet, as the matter is confidential, she has to feign a smile and act as though everything is normal. She cannot cast her responsibilities aside and aid in the search herself, either. And because she cannot, I will do so in her place. If I just sit by idly while she suffers in silence and do nothing to alleviate her burden, I won't be fit to call myself her friend ever again. Elise... <sighs> Looks like you lose this one, Schwarzer. You realize both of them are Schwarzer in this context. If I may, I think you would do well to put your trust in her here. Her skill with a rapier is formidable. <sighs> that may be so, but... Stop being so overprotective. I have toiled long and hard to master the art of fencing passed down through our family. Of late, I have even grown under Lady Aurier's tutelage. And far from letting my pen rest while my sword hand improves, I have overcome many a challenge as student council president. I am no longer a cowering child in need of your protection, dear brother. <sighs> All right. Ash called this one right. You win. Then... We'll be glad to have your assistance. But if things get dangerous, I want you to do as I say. Deal? Deal! We'll see about that, though. I wish you all well in your investigation. Please, do be careful. Should I catch wind of anything new here, I'll let you know immediately. Thank you. We appreciate it. Then let us set off. I will do my best not to overextend myself and leave you all to carry the burden. But please, if you are truly in need, I hope you won't hesitate to tell me. For even I possess a strength that you can lean on. Thanks. It's good to know you've got my back. And the feeling is mutual. <laughs> Right, so, let's actually end this part here, and in the next part we'll see about potentially doing the rounds in this area as well, and I assume other locations will come up, because again, we saw them enter the Bifrost, didn't we, so. It's a shop, in, in case anyone's wondering, not, not, not the Rainbow Road or anything like that, the, the Bifrost, it, it's a shopping area. We already saw that happen, so we'll be heading over there. So, there's going to be a few places we check in on. So yeah, we'll end this part here, but I am wondering... How we're going to do the story, because we're going to have to choose situations. I do feel that this is going to unlock, potentially, when we do a few things here with Reen. And I might stick to C and Reen's route for a while just because I want to see the story develop in Heimdall, and I don't feel Lloyd's route's going to be doing that. So it may be a little while before we actually head back to Lloyd. Yeah. But anyway, that's where we're ending this part, and we'll see you in the next part. Ta-da for now.